a faithful God. I've walked with him. I have tested, and I've seen that God is good. Uh, before I begin my message, let's, uh, I would kindly request we sing uh, the song that uh, the DOF sang, just this, the first answer. Maneno ya kinywa changu Kwa chanya tawaliwe na wewe bwana Maneno ya kinywa changu Kwa chanya tawaliwe na wewe bwana Amen. Uh, I want to say thank you to our daddy and mom for giving me an opportunity to share this platform. It's not that I'm better, it's not that I'm qualified, but God qualifies us. So I want to say thank you even for the, uh, the pastoral team for giving me this, uh, this opportunity. Uh, it's not easy to stand before people, but I thank God. Yeah, the Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and sound mind. And that's what I'm claiming to myself, that I will not fear, because God has given us the spirit of power. Uh, as I begin, my text today comes from Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 to 27. That is our main text, and I welcome all of you. Be expectant. God has something for each one of us. One as few way. Yes, I hope I will not bore you. Uh, and God will bless us. Uh, my text is Proverbs chapter 4, uh, verse 23. We are going to go through it up to 27. Uh, we can read. Uh, we are there. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it springs the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put diverse lips far away from you. 25. Let your eyes look straight and your eyelids right before you. 26. Ponder the path of your of your feet, uh, let all your ways be established. 27, do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your feet from evil. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you this morning. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your care. Thank you for your presence in our midst, oh God. We thank you for your word. As I speak unto it, Lord, use me as just a vessel to bring your word to your people. Thank you, Jehovah God, for many that are discouraged, for many that are downtrodden. Jehovah God, the many that are sick in our midst, O oh God. My Father, I pray that through your word, you're going to minister to each one of us, O oh God. Them that are asking you, God, for something, I pray that God, through your word, you're going to answer their prayers and their cries this morning. Them that are hurting, O oh God, I pray that your word will bring hope we rekindle hope in their lives in Jesus' name. That your word will bring healing and life and health even to our lives, O oh God. We thank you and bless you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I forgot to say I'm married to one husband. I'm married to one husband. And uh, God has blessed us with some, with some children. We thank God for that. And uh, we are doing well. One has to be... Wana sifiwe, wana sema gari kama haina namba plate ni amuizi. Ah, so I want to go right to the scriptures. Uh, the scripture we have we have read, uh, Proverbs. It talks about uh, several things which I would want us to look in the very in the short time that we have, and I believe God is going to bless us. Tuko, tuko uko nyuma. Ah yeah. So the uh, my topic. Read, guard your heart. Guard your sacred place. Your heart is a sacred place, and God is calling us this morning that we guard our heart. Our heart is special. Our heart 
uh, the Bible says, out of the, our heart, it, it has issues of life. Our heart is very important. And uh, this is what we are going to look uh, uh, to, to study today about guarding our heart. Each one of us has a heart. And the Bible says, it's only God that knows our hearts. One as if you uh, And it's always good. Once in a while, uh, I sit or you sit and examine your heart. It is very important. It is a healthy exercise to examine our hearts. As much as God looks at our hearts, it is important to examine our hearts. The Bible says God does not look at the outside. One as if you will. God does not look at how we dress, how we eat, how we do things. God looks at the heart. That means our hearts are very important in the eyes of God. One as if you will. So uh, I want to start uh, to, to say that uh, verse 23, it talks of uh, guarding. What, what does it mean to guard? When I was looking at the scriptures, I read uh, different verses, and uh, one thing I found was that guarding means watching. Guarding means watching, it means keeping, it means protecting, it means caring. So those are the words that uh, the Bible uh, refers. That if you have to guard your heart, you have to protect your heart, you have to care for it, you have to keep it, you have to, and you have to do it with all diligence. One has a few That guarding your heart, guarding my heart, I have to do it with all diligence. That means uh, all diligence is that you have to be very alert, you have to be careful, you have to be, I mean, you have to be cautious the way you guard your heart. One has a few uh, And uh, I was looking at... Uh, we, we, we have a soldier here who takes care of the church to guard. See you? The, the soldier is there to protect that any person who is not supposed to be in here, uh, at least we have to know why is he here. And uh, it's very unfortunate that uh, even with the guard, that some people came to the church and they were able to steal. That is very unfortunate and I'm sad about it. And I believe the prayer we have prayed, God will answer. So a guard, a guard does not sit inside. One as if you a, a guard has to be alert every time. All, in all corners, I believe the soldier here walks around at night and he checks and ensures everything is okay. So a guard does not sleep when others are sleeping. And that's what we are called to do when we are guarding our heart. Uh, and why should we, maybe I can just give a few, uh, just a few explanations. What does it mean? to guard our heart. What does it mean to guard our heart? And before I do that, there are things in life we guard jealously. Our marriages, yes? Our marriages, we guard jealously. Uh, our ATM card or our PIN, very few people, even married ones, they don't share their PINs. There are those who don't share. They guard jealously. Our bank accounts, we guard them. We protect our ID number, our ID cards. We guard them. Our title deeds. I believe that the title deed of this church is kept somewhere very safe. You can't, you can't just get it. We guard it. There are things that we guard, and we guard jealously. And it is important. We guard our children. We protect and care a lot. We do our best. Actually, parents nowadays, they are getting sick because of the care, the worry of their children. We guard. There are many things that we guard. We guard our homes. Somebody say that we, we do the walls, the stone walls, the RISA, uh, the RISA chain. We do everything. We even do, we are doing CCTV to guard our properties, our houses, that no one who is not allowed to be there should come in. How much more should we guard? our hearts. One as if you were. We employ even security night guards that are in our homes because we want to be protected. But how much do we guard our hearts? That is the question. How much do I protect my heart? Because 
All other things are null and void. But your heart, very important before God. And uh, I want to just give a few, a few simple ways of, uh, of what it means to guard our hearts. And one, as I was reading the scripture, I found that guarding our hearts means knowing the word of God. One as if you will. Keeping your heart or guarding your heart, it means knowing the word of God. And once, if you have to know the word of God, we have to dedicate time in reading the scriptures, in fellowshipping, I mean, all what it takes to know the word of God. That is what we are supposed to do. Another thing I found is that uh, by guarding your heart, you have to set boundaries. If you want to guard your heart, we need to put boundaries that your heart will be safe, that your heart will, not be, will be protected. Actually, nowadays, there are so many things that are affecting our hearts. Many things that are making our heart sick. That many things that are making us, our heart hurt. Yeah? Hello? The two things that are making our heart hurt. Tunaelewana? Hey. Roho zetu zinakuwa na uchungu. One, probably as a parent, sometimes we have children that are deviant. Children that are doing the things that you not want them to do. And your heart is paining. Your heart is hurting. Those are some of the things that God is reminding us that as much as they are like that, you have to guard your heart. Number two, it can be work. The work you're doing, the work you're doing, it's hurting you. It's making your heart hurt. Probably you're overworking. Probably the business is not doing well and your heart is hurting because of your work. God is telling us that you need to guard that heart. Others is lack of money. The, the economy uh, currently is very harsh for everyone. And this, people are worried. People are having sleepless nights. Where do we get money? Where do we get, uh, how do we get our children to school? And our hearts are hearty. One as if you will. God is reminding us this morning that we need to protect our heart. As much as we look for that money, as much there are so many things that are happening, my sisters, my brothers, God is reminding us that we need to, to guard our hearts. We need to protect our hearts. Uh, the other thing, the other thing uh, about uh, guarding our hearts, it means feeding our hearts with things that make you grow or that makes me grow. Feeding, uh, guarding your heart, it means that you have to feed that heart with things that will help you to grow. Because uh, nowadays, as you even you walk around, as you talk to people, you hear, hey, economy ni mbaya, squeeze ni kubaya, kazi ni mbaya. You know, there's a lot of negativity in life. And somehow, it is true. Whatever they are saying, it is true. But the Bible is warning us that we need to guard our hearts from listening to things that will pull you down. From listening to things that will make you not believe that God is doing something. That's what God is calling us to do. We need to feed our hearts with things that will make us grow, that will help our faith increase in God. One as if you were, ni watu ni wazungu nasikia wakisema, garbage in, garbage out. One as if you were. And that's what the Bible says, that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So whatever you feed your heart with, whatever you listen so much, that is what comes out of us. So the God is warning us that whatever we feed, we are sure to get it the other side. So it is important for us as Christians that what we feed our hearts on, we have to be very careful. We have to be very careful. Another thing, guarding our hearts means letting it go. One as if you were, guarding our hearts means letting it go. I want to give us uh, uh, my life experience. 
many years ago, many years ago, when I was a young girl, 14 years old, 15? Yeah, 15. Uh, I had a friend, and this friend of mine, Tukakosana, Tukua Watoto too, Tukakosana. I don't know what happened, but Tulikosana too. But what I remember, I wrote down. I wrote down the pain and the things she said, and I wrote them down. When I was in class eight, when I went to form one, when I went to form one, I carried that notebook, and I kept it in my box. And uh, in high school, we were, we were sleeping in rooms of six. Yeah, of, of six. But every Saturday, the box room used to be opened. You either you get some supplies you want, or you get some books you want to get. And this time, every time, every Saturday I could go to that bo box, I could read that note. And I used to feel so bad in my heart. And I did it for some time. One time, one pastor came to preach in our church, in, in the school, in the Christian Union. And she, she told us, no, he told us, let it go. Forgiveness is letting it go. Because it will make you, if you don't let it go, you'll stay with it, it becomes sickness in your body. And I'm telling you, the following Sunday, no, the following week, Saturday, I went, I pulled that notebook, I tore it down, and I threw it to the dustbin. From that day, my life was never the same. That, that lady today is a good friend of mine. She's a mama like me, and I forgot about it. But as long as that notebook was in my box, every Saturday I could sit and remember the pain I went through kwa sababu ya kukosana. So I, I bring this to you, that uh, the heart that you're going through, somebody probably aliku hurt. Na sikuizi kuna kukwazwa. Kuingi sana. Yeah. But I thank God, the youth last Sunday, they told us that those challenges that we go through in life, it is food for a Christian. Bwana sifiwe. But hata kama ni chakula, God is reminding us that we need to let it go. The heart that either a friend, a relative, or somebody, a liku heart, and you're still holding on to it. And that's why you cannot... You cannot see God. You cannot see God. You cannot go to the next level because you're still holding someone. Wanna see if you were? Are we ready to let it go? Examine your heart. There's something that you are holding. It can be even your mother or whoever it is. God is, God is reminding us, we let it go. We let it go. You become lighter. Once you forgive, you're also forgiven and uh, life will be good for you. Wanna see if you were? Uh, I learned a lesson. I don't allow somebody to, to hurt my heart to an extent that cannot see God. That can, I cannot pray. No, 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 no. That is the level that God is taking us. That even if you're hurt by someone, it doesn't mean you have to quit. I mean, no, no, no. God is telling us, let it go. And once you let it go, your life changes. And the life even of the other person who hurt you also changes. Uh, so, so it is important to let go the things that are hurting. You can be a child. A child and a kama mzazi, ameku hurt. Yani, umeku ukilia kwa zijili ya hui mtoto. I'm just pleading with us that let it go. Let it go. And once you let it go, even that child, mungu atambariki. Bwana sifiwe. Yeah, let's not be too hard on things that uh, hurt us. And once we do that, God is going to bless us. And something else, uh, issues also on uh, what it means to guard our hearts. It also means that uh, we, need, we need to check our attitudes. Sometime back, uh, Pastor Alex taught us about how our attitudes is contagious. If you have a negative attitude, it becomes contagious even to the people around you. And also the, this attitude, it can help you to grow. It can help you to move from one state to another. So it is important also to check our attitude towards others, towards God, 
and towards uh, many other things. And then I, I would also want to, to talk about uh, why. We have seen uh, what is guarding our hearts. Then I want to check why should, we keep, why should we guard our hearts? Why is it important? Why should we care about our hearts? And there are three things. There are three things that touches our heart. Three things, oh, they, 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 they are called three gateways to our hearts. Three things, one is our ears. The things that we hear can affect the condition of your heart. So it's very important also to mind what we hear. It is also important to mind what we see. Hmm. Nowadays, internet iko kila mahali, 24-7. Our children, tuko? Ata, ata, ata watu wakuba, tuko? Eh, it is free, internet. Some of our homes, we have Wi-Fi, 24-7. It is important for a Christian to mind what you see. Because what you see becomes you. What you see becomes you. It becomes part of you with time. Uh, I'm told 21 days, if you do something continuously for 21 days, I will practice. I, have, I think I, I want to do that research. If you do something for 21 days consecutively without stopping, it becomes a habit. It becomes a habit. And a habit is a, uh, changing that habit, it's also a hard thing. So it is important to check, to guard our hearts. Why, number one, our hearts, from our hearts, the Bible says, from our hearts, it flows, uh, it flows the springs of life, the issues of life, from our hearts. The issues of life comes from the heart. So very important, issues of life. Uh, number three there was our mouth. Uh, three gateways to our heart is the ears. What we hear, we need to be careful. What we see uh, and what we speak. I thank God for the song that maneno ya kinyo changu, mungu ya Sindio? Yeah, because what we speak. The, the Bible says uh, there is power in the tongue. Kuna nguvu katika ulimi. And most of us, we are children. The things we speak to our children have an impact. Words create. Maneno huumba. Uh, in the beginning, when uh, the God was creating the world, he spoke words. And things became. So uh, as parents also, it is important to be careful the words we speak to our children and even to ourselves. Sometimes we have self-talk. You talk to yourself. What do you talk to yourself? What, what is this? What is the content of the information you talk to yourself? It is very important because uh, they can create and whatever you speak comes to be. So it is important to guard our hearts because out of it, we have, there are issues of life. Number three, number two, why should we keep our hearts? Why should we guard and take concern of our hearts. Number three says, uh, because the heart is the center of communication with God. It is uh, the heart, uh, we keep our hearts for moral and spiritual relationship with God. I'm telling you, wakati tumekosana na njoroge. Hello? Kuomba siwezi. When, a heart, when my heart is, when I have not forgiven, I can't pray. And I believe even us, when, when your heart has a problem, you cannot communicate to God properly. You, you feel like, so it is important for all of us to, to, to know why should I protect my heart? It is because we, we protect our hearts because our hearts we have moral and spiritual relationship with our God. Very important. And you bear me witness, if your heart is sick, hata tuambie kujeni maombi, utakuja utatafuta maneno, utayapata. Mwana sifiwe. So the importance of why we should protect our hearts. Number four, we need to protect our, our hearts 
because uh, the Bible says that, uh, let me check, uh, that we need to protect our hearts not to quench the spirit of God. When your heart is sinful, when my heart is sinful, the spirit of God does not get space in our hearts to operate. So it is important that our hearts, we have protected our hearts. There is nothing, there is nothing that is affecting us. You can think about it, but it doesn't, you, we are not supposed to allow it to sink into our hearts. A thought can come, but don't allow it to get into your heart. It is human to, to get angry, it is human to feel sad, but that sadness or anger should not drop into the heart. It can be in the mind, but it should not drop it into the heart. One as if you will. Yeah, because that is the heart that is where God resides in our lives, and it is important to protect that one. Uh, and then I would also want to say that uh, the heart is where we connect with God. The heart is where we connect with God and other people. If you love someone, it becomes very easy to embrace them. Because your heart is, because your heart is, uh, there is, we are told, the heart, in the heart, that is where we have emotions and feelings in the heart. And that's why when you get annoyed, you feel hurt. One time ago, uh, when I was bringing my children, one, one child, you know, young mothers, eh? Young mothers, you get, you are tired from home, from work, you are tired from work, and kids are all over throwing things, the viatus are all over, things are scattered, and you come, the first thing you do, you scream, you know, you shout. You shout with them without knowing. And one, one child asked me, she was in class one, very young, she told me, Mom, nataka kukwambia kutoka leo, mimi wakati unashout, nasikianga vivu. Baya sana. Unasikia vibaya wapi? Hapa ndani. Nasikia vibaya sana. Hata ukiongea pole pole, tutasikia tu. Mtoto wa class one. Six years. So nikamuliza, ni, hapo ni wapi? Hapa ndani kwa roho, hapo ndani. Nasikia nga kitu uchungu. And actually she used to cry. Anaenda bedroom analia. Anajifanguza machozi ya nakuja. From that day. From that day. I told them, Niki scream, na niambia mam, ah, ah, tuliongea. I had even to go to class to know how to bring children. I, I have done, I've done, uh, inaitwa nini? Uh, parenting. A course on parenting. Because the heart is where our emotions are. And even our children, the young children. The other time we had Sunday school week, one child, another one said a verse she was to say. That child cried after she left. Actually, for some Sundays, she didn't come to church. And once we followed, she said, Niliskia vibaya sana hapo ndani. Because that is where our emotions are seated. So, bwana asifiwe kanisa. So, when, <laughs> let me speak on behalf of Sunday school. When Sunday school, they are having a presentation, kindly give us ample time, daddy, because our children get hurt if they don't present, or they are hurried, they get hurt, and they cry. Walimu wa Sunday school, they can attest. We wipe their tears. Uko, wanalia. So, uh, so our, our hearts, that is where our feelings are seated. It is important to protect those, uh, our hearts. And, uh, uh, <laughs> So it is important, how do we then, because we have seen why we should protect our, our hearts, how do we then protect our hearts? How do we protect our hearts? And uh, as I said, we protect our hearts from many things, even pride. Pride, pride we, we protect our hearts to be proud, yeah? For insecurity, sometimes you feel insecure. Uh, impatience. There are people who are so impatient. They can't wait. They are so impatient. Uh, we protect our hearts from hearts from other people. Revenge. We protect our hearts from revenge. I thank Daddy. He said we are not going to to curse this person who took these things, but we are going to to pray that God uh, God will bring them 
uh, God will give us others. So, the Bible says, because the enemy, the, John 10.10, 10, the Bible says, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And what he will do, he will use your heart. He will use my heart. And he might even use somebody to kill, to destroy that which is in us. So it is important to take care of our hearts. And one thing I want to say, uh, we need to protect what comes in your heart. Very important. Every time. And then another, how we need to, pre to, to, pro to guard our hearts, we need to know the word of God. David said in Psalms 119, how do we protect our hearts? And I love David. The Bible says David was a man after God's heart. Despite the many challenges, the many things he did that were not right, God said, David is a man after, uh, is a, after my heart. The Bible says, I seek uh, Psalms 119, verse 10 to 11. Psalms 119, 10 to 11, he says, I seek with all my heart that I may not stray from your commands. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Our heart should be a store of God's word. Our heart should be a, a, a store, a gunnery for God's word. Such that when you feel something, it's, when you speak the word of God in your heart, it brings life to us. It brings life to you. And uh, uh, David prayed a prayer in Psalms 51. He said, create in me a clean heart, O Lord. Yeah? Restore unto me the joy of salvation. Because if your heart is not right, you cannot rejoice. You, you cannot have the joy of salvation. So the condition of our hearts, we need to take care and we need to mind about the condition of our hearts. And uh, number two, how to guard our hearts, we need to be prayerful. Like uh, what I have said, David was a prayerful person. Atakama Litenda Mambogani, he was close to God. He was quick enough to repent and to know that he has sinned before God. And he said, create in me a clean heart, O Lord. Psalms, let me look at that. There are things that uh, David prayed uh, very quickly. Yeah, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. 11. Do not cast me away from your presence. Because if our condition of our hearts are not good, you can be sure God will not reside there. And that's why David said, do not cast me away from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. If the conditions of our heart are safe, the Holy Spirit cannot reside there. So we, we, we have to do that. The next verse. Thank you. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Yeah, restore to me the joy of salvation. Many are times when we are wounded, when our hearts are wounded, we need God to restore us. We need God to renew us afresh. Uh, and I'm, I'm not saying to be hurt, to be hurt is wrong. You can be hurt, it is not wrong to feel bad, but it is bad to remain hurt. One as if you were, you can be hurt and you'll be hurt. Uh, one time, uh, when I went to my first job, uh, my boss told me, Purity, you have come to a Christian organization. But I want to assure you, there are no angels here. That was the first thing I was told. You have come to a Christian organization, but there are no angels here. So people are bound to make mistakes. As much as we are Christians, we are bound to make mistakes. But the mistake, the, the, the bad thing is, you are hurt and you remain there hurt. That is the, the, the thing that is wrong. Uh, and, uh, and I'm going to show you some people that went through hurt. But how did they overcome? And that is what, what God is reminding us this afternoon, what to do. Uh, and then the other thing I, I said, how to guard our hearts, uh, I said, uh, is protecting what comes in our lives, knowing the word of God, as David said, 
uh, and then being prayerful. And then number four, we need to continually examine our hearts. Eh, kuna mama anapenda kutuambia, najiitanga kamkutano. Eh, unajiita kamkutano. Una, unachukora roho yako. Eh, is there anything? And David said, search me, O Lord. Examine my heart and see whether there is anything that is negative. Mara nyingi tunaenda tu kwa business yetu every day we are busy busy music all over you can't listen sorry for young people i find many young people they don't like a quiet place they want music all over kwa matatu is boom 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 sometimes they, they, i don't know i don't know i need to do to do a research you know why that noise sometimes it is good just to be silent and uh, quiet and listen to your heart and listen to yourself yani kujitadhimini and you know it madam christine kujitadhimini yani self evaluation of the heart the condition of the heart very important and that is the time god will tell you hapa unaumwa here there is a problem here there is a problem and from there we are able to know what to do uh, the bible says in romans 12 verse 2 it says do not conform do not conform you know many things will speak to you for you to conform to the way they are but uh, uh, paul is reminding uh, 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 reminding us that we should not conform but we need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds and that's why it is important to keep on reading the word of god because it renews our mind the word of god renews our mind a verse i read some time it says the word of god brings light into our lives yani the word of god brings light even where there is darkness in our hearts god brings light if you read the word of god so we we are reminded to ensure our hearts are in good condition uh, examples from the bible examples of those who protected their hearts they guarded their hearts despite the pain they never quit they never ran away they they stayed they they i mean they they stood still they never left bwana asifiwe bwana asifiwe kanisa na kanisa la deliverance wacha leo ni wanene si ndio bwana asifiwe Watu wengi watu wengi wanasema sikuje kanisa the other week i talked to someone kamuzi mbona ukuje ukuje church nilikwazwa sasa <laughs> anyway it is important don't remain hard and once you are hard running away does not solve actually it makes it even worse for you bwana sifiwe because out there you will listen you will hear you will i mean you will even talk but we have good perfect examples in the bible people that went through pain they never left and god lifted them to greater heights bwana sifiwe and one example Uh, I want to give today is about Hannah. Hannah in the Bible in 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 10 from when you read uh, from 8 to 10 first Samuel. First Samuel Thank you, thank you. Yes. Uh, the Bible says then Elikana her husband said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat and why is your heart grieved am i not better to you than 10 sons so hannah arose after they had finished eating and drinking in shilo now eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the lord 10 and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the lord and wept in anguish 11 Okay. 
think it was previous, either seven, up there seven, where, where the Bible says that Penina provoked Hannah, ear by ear. Hannah and Elkanah, they, went, they used to go for, uh, for, to give a sacrifice every year. And the Bible says Penina provoked Hannah year after year. When they were going to give a sacrifice, Hannah didn't have children. And this, uh, the, the, the Penina had the sons and, and the others, and each of them had gifts. But Hannah had nothing. And this pricked her heart. But what did she do? Uh, this is what I want us to learn. That once you are hurt, you don't disappear. You don't get into your cocoon. Hannah was wise. And this is the wisdom God is looking for. That Hannah went to Shiloh. She went and in bitterness of heart, she prayed to God. And God saw that bitterness. She didn't even revenge. Some of us, you would want even to speak bad. You would want to do things that are negative because we are hurt. But the Bible says, Hannah went in bitterness of heart. She prayed to God. And what happened? At the end of the day, Samuel was born. Out of that prayer, Samuel was born. And Samuel was not just a child, was a different child. And this is what God is calling us. Once things are not working right, once our hearts are not okay, we are not supposed to, to even we have a responsibility. We need to, God is calling us to just look up to him. The other one is, is our sisters uh, did a drama, they said, the wife of Job used to tell Job, ah, we mungu, so you just curse him. Curse him and die. He pain in nyingi. It's a lot of pain. Why should you keep on, I'm tired of scratching you. You know, I mean, ata surayako ni mbaya. Look at, you know, you are very handsome. Nowadays, things are bad. Curse him. And Job was wiser. He never cursed God. Job never cursed God. And at the end of the day, by trusting upon God, he got a double, double of whatever he lost. Another one I was looking at was Hezekiah. Hezekiah was also a servant who went through pain. He went through pain. He went through pain. Uh, one, one time, the armies, the, the servants of the king of Assyria, called St. Kareb, was given a message to deliver to Hezekiah. It wasn't good news. There were news that were discouraging, news that were bad. Hezekiah didn't go and talk to people. The first thing he did, he went to God. He went and, and before God and told God the pain he was going through and the things that he had gone through. And uh, at the end of the day, God gave them victory in the wars that he was praying for. And then there's also another one. We, 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 we have heard of Yabez. Yabez was going through pain. In fact, his name was Pain. And Hakula uh, Lamika, he knew how to go to God. And he went to God, and at the end of the day, whatever Yabez prayed, God answered. When you are hurt, when things are not going well, where do you go to? Who is the first person you talk to? We are reminded that when these things happen, we need to seek God first. We need to seek God first. And all these people, they had one thing in common, prayer. All had one thing in common. They went to God in prayer to, for God to heal their pain. No one, you know, uh, no one will heal your pain the things that we are, the worries that we have. The Bible says, cast, cast your cares and burdens unto, uh, and cast your cares unto God. Cast your burdens, cast your burdens to God and he will care for you. So it is important to cast the burdens that we have. And I, I know 
We are carrying burdens. We are carrying heavy loads. We are carrying others. And we are Christians. We are carrying others. You can't lift your head because you are carrying. People are heavy to carry. When Moses was leading the children of Israel, it wasn't an easy, it wasn't a walk in the park. Yeah, it wasn't easy. But Moses, he drew his strength from God. Every time when the children of Israel were making a lot of noise, they were feeling, why did you, why, why did you take us to the wilderness? Moses could run to God. God, you gave me this task. How do I go about it? Look at them. They are complaining. They are talking ill about me. Ah, you remember there was Miriam. Miriam, Miriam, uh, the brother to Moses. I can't even compare against Moses. And uh, you know what happened? Yeah, Miriam. And trust in God. Uh, and then uh, the Bible says in, in Joshua chapter 1, and uh, this is something that I've, I've looked, and I was seeing Joshua, when, when he, was, uh, he was taking over from Moses, there was something that God told Joshua. And he told him, these words, let them not depart from your heart, even from your mouth. You have to keep on speaking them. Because the word of God is, you know, is life. The word of God is life. And he knew, God knew, Joshua was to go through those challenges that were there. But he was to draw his strength. He, God encouraged him to have the word of God. To draw, to draw his strength from the word. When things are not doing right, when people are talking about you, you have the word of God to give you strength. And this is what God is calling us to do. That we need to have the word of God. The word of God that encourages, the word of God that gives hope, that is what we need. Uh, and then, as I, as I finish, I would want us to read a scripture. I want us to read uh, a few scriptures uh, to ground the message. Um, I, I, got a, I got somebody in the Bible, Anaitwa, somebody Anaitwa, Rabushake. Rabshake, 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 oh, it is interesting. Rabshake, walikuwa watu wacha. They were three servants of uh, this king of Assyria. They were used to bring fear to Hezekiah. They were used to bring discouragement to show them that, ah, mungu wako hakuna kitu anaizafanya. Your God cannot do it. It is not possible. You can't do it. Yani, it's what our sister was saying, that there are people who discourage they show you it is not possible. After you don't even fit there, it, is, it cannot be done. There are those kind of people. God is reminding us, let us not be rabushake. Yeah? Eh, people who just pull people down, 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 down. And sometimes parents will bring our children down. God is not happy about that. In 2 Kings 1914, 2 Kings 1914, there the, the were three, those three servants. They were discouraging Hezekiah, even the people, even the people to know that God is there for them, that God will give them victory. But Hezekiah, Hezekiah received the letter from the messengers and read it. Then he went up to the temple of the Lord and spread it out before the Lord. When you get bad news, when people talk about you, where do you go to? That is the question. Hezekiah went and spread that thing before God, and he was healed. It never came to pass. There were uh, Tobias, and uh, Tobias, and uh, they were called who? Tobias and Sankareb. They were discouraging Nehemiah to build the wall. How I pray that you will not be Tobias. You will not be Tobias. How I pray that you will not be Rabushake to discourage others, to, to show people that they cannot make it. Let us be people who encourage others. Even in their smallest steps they are making. Even in their smallest steps they are making. 
Let us encourage them. I want to give an example. I have a son. I have a son, and this son is being brought up together with three girls, uh, two girls ahead. And uh, his performance wasn't very good. And he used to ask me, Mommy, how come I'm not doing like the others? And that used to disturb him so much. And uh, one time, when they were given uh, gifts in school, he could cry because he was not getting a gift. And uh, because I had gone to a counseling course, parenting course, every time when it was closing day, I could get a gift. When others are getting, I also give him. So when they are coming home, all of them could have their gift. And he was excited. And one time he told me, Mom, when I get to class eight, Mimi nita pita utashanga. Now one thing I want you to do, I want you to hold my hand and be praying with me. Bwanasifiwe. And along the journey, since class one, we have walked that journey. Every time when they close, I hold his hand and I tell him, my son, you can make it. Uh, Pastor Alex has taught us that you have a great seed in you. You, I mean, you have potential. And I kept talking to this boy. And I'm telling you, when the results came, he told me, Mom, I know now. You are God, the God you serve answers prayers. Even the weakest, let's encourage them. Even the weakest, watch to a pepete. Yeah? And they will make it. They are those children. They may not be the same, but in their areas, let's encourage them. Let's lift them. It can be even in church. <laughs> when I was young, I never used to, I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know how to pray. I didn't even know how. I used to get quad vitu singeweza. But people encouraged me. They supported me. And I thank Dad for giving me this opportunity and also serving in the church. It has helped me to grow with time. So let's encourage each one of us that uh, we get, uh, we, we uh, a lot of encouraging. Nowadays, there are many things that are pressing people down. Their hearts are down. We are hurting. There's a lot of pain. Who is this? Who is this man? Who will encourage? Who will tell people it is possible? God can do it. It is doable. You can make it. You go through it. It is hard, yes, I know, but God is there for you. We are, God is looking for people to encourage others. One as if you were. God, that is what God is looking this morning. And as we do that, as we guard our heart, God will speak to us. God will encourage us. And I'm telling you, when we, when we, when we our mouth, if we use our mouth, what, how God wants us to do, I'm telling you, we'll be, I, I mean, Mungu atafurahia, son. One as if you were. God will be encouraged and no one will quit. No one will quit. All of us will stay put. Because once you get out there, things are not okay. Things are not okay. So it is important that uh, we guard our hearts, we guard our mouth, we guard what we see, we guard what we listen. Let's, let's be careful what we listen. Let's be careful what we talk, because some words kill. How we talk to others, kill. It can be kill even a talent in somebody. The way we speak to others, let us be careful, and God will bless us. Let's use our mouth to glorify God, to praise God in the life of others. So I, I want to conclude, and... Uh, just a verse. The Bible says, as I finish, the Bible says, uh, my final, Ephesians 6, Ephesians 6, 10. Ephesians 6, 10, 6, 10 and 13, it says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's scheme. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil 
in the heavenly realms. Bwana asifiwe. So the devil is waiting, you know. The devil is waiting to rusha a mshale. And that mshale will be haita rushwa na anybody is just people. So we have to be careful. We have to put on the full armor of God. Let us be on guard. Let us be cautious. Let us be alert. That even when it is ikirushwa, you are alert. It will not get into your heart. Bwana sifiwe. And uh, when we do that, God will bless us. Philippians 4, 6. I'm, I'm winding up. Philippians 4, 6. Philippians. Thank you. Because we are anxious. We are worried. We don't know what will happen. And that affects our heart. The Bible says, do not be anxious of anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Are you anxious in your heart? Are you worried? Present your request to God. And God will bless us. I want to end there and uh, sing this song, a chorus. Linda, linda, moyo wako kuliko vyote ulinda vyo, kesha sana ukiyomba. Linda, linda, moyo wako. Linda, linda, moyo wako kuliko vyote ulinda vyo, kesha sana ukiyomba. Linda, linda, moyo wako. The much you linda your ATM, your title deed, your ID card, unaweka ndani kabisa, very safe. Let us guard our hearts. Bwana asifiwe. God bless you as we continue to guard our hearts. Our hearts are sacred. It is the center of communication with God. May God bless you.